Last night, the New York Mets played the Miami Marlins in a baseball game that was way more than a baseball game. Uh, on scene for us and uh, able to share the information she received, Christy Ackert of the New York Daily News. Uh, Christy, what was last night like? Um, you know, it was more like covering a wake than a baseball game, to be quite frank. It was um very emotional night. Um, you could see it was very emotional for all the players on both sides of the field and um, took a lot out of them. It was it was a sad night. It was, it was also a very strange night to be in a ballpark. Are you surprised both the Marlins and Mets were able to take the field so quickly? Uh, I was surprised. I, I was you know, I don't really know how the Marlins got through it. If you looked in their faces, they were kind of blank after the game. You could tell that they were exhausted and and just worn out. Um, and then that moment when the Mets and the Marlins kind of met in the infield and, and hugged, you know, that was just pure raw emotion. And, and to be able to just go out and throw the first pitch after that, you know, it was kind of startling, actually. I was surprised it was that quick. Christy Acker of New York Daily News with us. She was on the scene last night as the Mets played the Marlins. You, you said it was more like uh, a wake than a baseball game. Normally, this time of year, in this tight of a wild card race, uh, you would look at a loss like this and, and be pretty upset. Did you get any indication the Mets were upset they lost this game? I think they were disappointed. Um, I think they were in an awkward role last night. I mean, they knew what the win meant to... Um, the Marlins, they knew they were in the role of a spoiler in that situation, and I don't think there was, you know, anger or, you know, a, you know, regret, regret about it. I think there was a little disappointment that now they're kind of in this race a little tighter than they wanted to be. But you know, as Bartolo Colon said last night, he 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 thought it was the right outcome for the evening. Chrissy, when you look at Bartolo Colon, who like. He definitely loves life sometimes a little more than baseball. Is there's there's no chance he grooved pitches last night, right? I don't. He said he didn't. Um, I don't know what the emotion did to him when he was out there pitching. Um, I think that it was certainly a hittable fastball. Let's put it that way. Okay. Tuesday in Miami, Wednesday in Miami, there's going to have to hit a point where the Mets almost have to flick a switch. They have to turn in to say, all right, we understand what's happened with Jose Fernandez, but we are still competing for a playoff spot. Can you get a vibe in the locker room or talking to players if that almost switch in attitude is going to be difficult here the next two games? I think it is. I think, honestly, the energy you the emotional energy you used last night, it carries over. You can see it. Obviously, it was it's harder on the Marlins who have been going it for, through it for two days. But you know, I heard that the the Mets plane was you know just silent on the way down here. That there was just you know tension. And these are you know these are young guys. A lot of these guys haven't really dealt with a loss in their personal lives, let alone their private lives. So there was some nerves, I'm sure. You know, going into last night and this week, um, I think. You know, getting through that last night, get, maybe getting a good night's sleep, they can turn the page. Um, but it's not going to be easy. I, I think the whole thing is it's going to be dramatic for the Marlins for the rest of the season going into next year. The whole time here for the Mets is not going to be a pleasant experience. Christy Ackert of the New York Daily News with LeVac and Gaz right here on 104.5 The Team. Christy, we appreciate it. I know this isn't even an easy thing to cover. But you, you mentioned, we, you know, we talk about flipping the switch and, and they're going to be in the locker room. Who's the leader of this team? Who's the guy in the locker room who's going to step up and go, all right, guys, look, I know it's, I know you feel like the Grinch who stole Christmas, but let's go out there and win this game. Um, you know, that's a good question. As Dribble Cabrera could be one that does that. Um, Terry Collins is in a position to do that. Um, you know, Noah Syndergaard can certainly set a tone today by going out there and pitching well. Um, you know, there's not a real vocal leader in the clubhouse with David Wright gone and, and Neil Walker gone. Kelly Johnson can be that person. He's not very vocal, but he can do it by, you know, example. So, you know, it'll be a lot of the veterans trying to lead the way today. And, and Noah Syndergaard's in a, in a pretty big spot. Christy, one of the tough things I've been trying to handle is that the Mets were five and a half games back in the NL wildcard chase in mid-August. 
and now they're leading the NL wild card. But from my perspective, I don't know if this team's actually gotten better, and it's just that they've been benefiting from that schedule. You cover this team all the time. Do you feel like this Mets team is actually better than a month ago? I think their offense is a little bit better than it was a month ago. Um, I think their schedule is not. Uh, you know, they definitely benefited from the schedule. And the other thing they benefited from is, you know, those other National League teams aren't that good. I, I don't really think the, the Giants are that dominating or the Cardinals are that dominating. So they've, they've been in a good spot. Christy Ackert of New York Daily News with us right here on 104.5 The Team. So, Christy, the, the thing we're looking at right now is if if everything stays the way it's laid out, Noah Syndergaard would, would pitch on Sunday, and then who do you throw out on that Wednesday for the wild card? Um, is, is this a situation where they're hoping to lock this up and, and rest him and then put him out there for the wild card? And if they can't, who do you throw out there? Honestly, I would have to go with Bartolo Colon in that situation. I'm not sure I would put one of the two rookies out there. Uh, yeah, they're hoping that they can lock this up maybe a day earlier, skip Noah, and have him lined up for the wild card still. Um, but, you know, they could be playing for that. They could be playing for home field advantage on Sunday. They, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a last minute decision, and we won't know until probably Saturday night. Christy, is there any part of you that's comfortable with Bartolo Colon in a must win situation? Uh, it's not your <laughs> ideal situation, but, you know, he knows how to pitch. Um, you could back him up with one of the rookies, I guess. I, you know, it's not a good situation. It's, all year they've been losing starting pitchers, and, and this has been their, you know, their Achilles heel, and it's probably what's going to come back to bite him in the end. Chrissy Acker to the New York Daily News, uh, t- covering some very tough stuff for us. We really appreciate you, and thanks for you know kind of pulling back the curtain on what went on last night. Uh, my pleasure. All right, Chrissy, have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Take care, Chrissy Acker to the New York Daily News, right there, and.